Hey, hello, uh, my name is Avela, my name is Mbono. I am very excited to be part of this video here and to inspire those who wish to get into medicine. I'm from Kwambiza in the Eastern Cape, but now I'm currently based in Lexington Manor, Centurion. Oh, my journey in medicine, how to get into medicine, it's a tough one, but yeah, let me spell it out. Okay, I did my metric in 2004 at Indra High School, also in the Eastern Cape. Uh, my metric year was not uh, the best year for me. Uh, that year I was sick, I was in and out of hospital. I spent roughly about seven months in hospital. Uh, I had pneumonia. Yeah, it was pneumonia most of the time, which also carried on on my first year in university. But anyway, um, I always wanted to, to study medicine and become a doctor. What inspired me to, to, to study medicine when I was young, before I even went to grade one actually, in my village, you find that uh, people are struggling, there are no doctors close by, and my grandmother would tell me that, yo, you know what, so and so is sick and there's no doctor, sometimes when you go to the hospital, there's only one doctor, the doctor is a theater sometimes, so there's no doctor to attend to them. So I felt to myself that, you know what, I want to make a difference, I want to to change the, the, the lives of the people in my village and also the misery that you could see when one of the old people was very sick. So I got into school with an idea of wanting to do medicine, but uh, unfortunately, life and its challenges happened. So in 2004, like I said, I did my matric. I was sick and I didn't obtain good marks. For instance, my English was an E. That time, it was that time of higher grade and lower grade. I did everything on higher grade. My English was an E. An E, it's, a, it's between 50 to 60 percent. My math was a C. A C, it's a 60 percent. Actually, it's, it's between 60 and 69 percent. Also for physics, I got a C. And then for biology, I don't know how it happened, but I got a D. And then for geography, I think it was my high score, I got a B. A B is 70 to 79 percent. Then I did Africans as well. Africans I got a 40 percent. I got 43, which was an F. I think an F was between 43.3 to, to 50 percent. I'm not sure. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, those were my marks. Uh, people were excited for me that I obtained those marks, but I knew it in me that I could have done better. So me being young and all that. Um, I was told that maybe I should just repeat my metric altogether. But I felt like, no, I worked so hard. I, I, I even escaped from a hospital just to go and write an exam without being discharged. I discharged myself. So I felt to myself, no, I, I can't go back. I've worked so hard. So at that time, I wanted to study in vets. I was still excited about Kwaito, wanting to see the Kwaito artists in Jobek and all that. So I wanted to study in bed so much. Then bed sent me a message to say, sorry, we regret to inform you that we cannot take you because my marks were low. Like I said, I got this thing for, for math and a C for physics and my English was a D. So um, my second option was, was Medunsa, Medical University of Southern Africa, which at the time changed their name to University of Limbo. So fortunately for me, they accepted me at Medunsa, but at Medunsa, I don't know how things work there, even to today. They actually accepted me for, for BSc. I was young at the time, I didn't have the energy to fight for everything, so I just accepted the BSc because I love science. I love the idea of becoming a scientist, working in research and development. So I called me Tunsa, I did my BSc from first year to, to, to third year. Started there in 2005. I was about 17, 18 years then, I was, I was still quite young. How about 17 years? I turned 18 years already in Medusa. So you know when, when you are young and you don't really have someone, because all my years of studying I've been in boarding school, in boarding school there's a routine that you follow and the laws are being enforced. So for the very first time in my life, I was on my own. I had to do everything by myself. So in Medunsa, yes, I, I tried to work hard, but unfortunately the pneumonia was still there for me. 
So I did my first year there, I passed, I did my second year. So when we were doing second year, the opportunity to do medicine again was there to say, guys, if you want to move to medicine. But it, it was not easy. I've tried it made to when you can apply for medicine and be promised everything. And when you get there, you don't get a clear answer. Like the people say that, uh, you know, we give so much spaces for children who are straight from a trick. And then we give so much for those who are doing a foundation phase with the Medusa program to get into medicine. Maybe five spaces for those who are post grad And then I felt like I, the chances are slim. I didn't have the, 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 the energy to fight. And also me being young, you know, when you're young, you can be naive with other things. I said, you know what, I cannot do two years of PSC just as a, as a foundation course or as an upgrading course. It's, it's money that was used, it's time that was used. So I complete the PSC and let the PSC work for me. So I did my PSC and I completed it in 2007. So 2008, uh, I went to work. So I wanted to work for the military actually in 2007. So in the military, they take time to respond. The reason why I wanted to work for the military is because they advertise that if you can get to them, they can take you to school to do medicine. You can either do it here in South Africa or you go to Tatrod in Cuba and out there. And when I was young at the time, I was willing to get into the pro program. So I worked in 2008 as a teacher just for a year in the Eastern Cape at Indre High School. I taught there math and physics. I also assisted with biology and English. Though, whereas those were not in my in my syllabus, I just assisted because I was good at them. So 2009, the military now called me to say, we received the application, come through, come work for us. So I was excited knowing that I'm going to the military, I've got PSC, I will be working in the lab. So also there was unfortunate because the person that I was in contact with, I uh, couldn't get their numbers. It's only when I got into the defense force that I understood that, ah, maybe the person was transferred to another area or so. So when I got there, instead of going to the work at the lab and all that, I was taken through the, the, the program, the MSDS program, where everyone from a trip must go do the basic training and do all those necessary steps, you understand, until they can be taken to school. But nevertheless, yes, once I was done with training, hoping to be taken to the lab, unfortunately I was taken into patient admin. So when I patient admin, I spoke to a lady there who was in charge, who was willing to take me to the lab. She took me to the lab. Bear in mind that once I was inside there, I also applied to be taken into the military. Me trusting my mate to and knowing that, no, look, I was there. I'm going there again. So I applied at Medunsa. That was 2009, applying for 2010 to, to get into, into Medunsa. Unfortunately, uh, I never got a response. And also on the military side of things, because I was now working, I wanted the military to pay my salary while I'm at school and also to pay for my tuition. Then the military also didn't accept my, my application. And I then continued, you know, to work in the lab. But when I was working at the lab, I had PSC, they prepared the lab at biomedical technology. So it was a challenge because they said that, you know, they don't want people with PSC, they don't have post for people with PSC. HPCSA, at the, on the other hand, was saying, no, it's fine, you can work with PSC. All you need is to write the board exam. But I saw that, you know what? HPCSA is not immediately in front of me, like the people that I'm working with. So I decided that I will do what the military requires. I will go back and do those uh, modules that they require of the um, of biomedical technology. So I went back to school at uh, 2010 to 2011, but I was working at the time because most modules for biomed and PC were the same. So. I could get time to actually to go to school and do things and come back and cover my hours. So I did that between 2010 and, 20, and 2012, it was about two years. Then um, I came back, now I worked full time in the lab. I, I enjoyed my, my, my work at the lab, I was actually good at it. I love science, I did my best. Though in me, I could feel it that I'm only using 40% of my of my potential you know i would want to do more 
with, with myself. I know patients were happy, the people that I used to work with were happy saying that I'm such a blessing and oh, I'm all there. So once again, me and my colleague applied to get into medicine. That was in 2016, applying for 2017. Then the defense force said that they do not have funds. And actually my boss is at the lab at the time. They were just not having it as well. So I, I let it go. I tried to convince myself that, you know what? I'm done with this medicine goal. I'm actually, I'm here because now I was already married by then. I had a family and I wanted to do certain things. Let me just take a sip here. Thank you. I had a family. Uh, surely I was getting a decent salary. I could afford a decent house, decent car, everything, you know. But you know what they say, money is not everything. I had that thing in me that, you know, look, you're living beyond, uh, beneath, uh, or oh, below your potential. You, you actually can do better. You just, it's like you're living a half life. So I applied again to get into medicine for, for 2018. Things didn't go well. Then one time at work, I was doing overtime, it was at night. I was listening to a motivation by Desert Washington. He said, uh, his wife usually says, in order to have something you never had, you've got to do something you never did. So I said to myself, look, I've been doing things right. I've been going to the right people. I've been following the process. Now let me do something differently, you know. I don't blame myself because I was raised in a church. I always did things in this, the right way. Being the sweet boy, scared of approaching people and trying to knock on doors, thinking that the only way to do things is the way but when i listen to that message it's like it ignited something inside of me to say look now you've got to transform yourself altogether or else this thing is not happening at the time when i looked at my life i felt like look i'm left about 29 years until i can go to pension i'm delivering at work everyone is excited everyone is happy about me but i am not happy i mean no i am not living to full potential so it was until um at work, they proposed something called client service. Normally, when you work in the lab, uh, you do not work with patients. You, do, you, you work with the nurses and the doctors. Even then, you don't work with them directly. You just get their results, you print them out, you give them the results. So at client service, it was a place where you sit on a computer and then whoever is at got inquiries about their blood results and everything, you print and you give it to them. So people used to come there and be excited about my services offer me lunch and all that and I'm like no I'm just being a nice person it's what everyone is supposed to do they told me that no not everyone is like this you are an exception then I thought to myself that look in the hospital in order to have much influence you've got to be a doctor and I know it in me that I've always wanted to be a doctor and to bring this change to bring about this influence so that was the time when that message of this Washington came and then I started now approaching the senior people in the defense force and leaving the immediate people because it was not helping me. I mean, I've done it three years already, three times already, and the results were coming back. There's no funds, there's no funds, with no acknowledgement of uh, receiving my documents from the senior structures. So I went straight to the senior structures. So that way it worked out for me. It was not easy, it was difficult. I don't want to lie. It's not something that I wish to go through again. But I did, and I'm grateful to God for that. But nevertheless, 2019, I applied uh, at UP to get into the medicine program and all that. The letter came back, it was in July. It said that I have been, been taken, they regret to inform me, and the reason was English. And I said to myself, there is no way someone is going to reject me because of English. I've worked in a hospital for more than 10 years. I've worked with doctors and nurses they always say good remarks about me. I'm going to UP to give them that challenge to say, look guys, this thing is wrong. You cannot deny me because of this reason. Give me a valid reason. I'm actually rejecting the, your, 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 your letter of refusal. Then I went to UP. I found a lady there. I won't mention her name. So we spoke and then she said to me, no, the reason we rejected you is actually because we didn't receive all the documents. I remember I said to her, according to me, the computer, it acknowledged that everything that I uploaded has been received. 
why didn't you guys show me that on your side of things? Then she was like, no, she can see it in my attitude. I can never make it into medicine. Even if I were to make it in medicine, I wouldn't be successful in it. I would fail. But then at that time, I already knew that, ah, look, people's opinions are just their opinions. They are not a reality over my life. So I felt like, okay, this lady is not going to help me. I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to seek for a senior. So I went back home. I spoke to a friend of mine who used to attend HUP, but he did teaching. And I told him how annoyed I was and how a receptionist told me the things that she told me that I can never be a doctor, I can never get into medicine. And they were like, no, maybe ask to go and see the professor. Then two days later, I went to see, I went, I wanted to see the dean of medicine. As I was waiting downstairs, the security guard went to inquire for me. When the security guard came back, said, no, the professor said that that's a minor problem. He's not going to see you because of that. You must go back to admin. That's an admin problem. Then I said, okay, let me just go back there. But on that day, fortunately for me, I was wearing military uniform. So as I was waiting at the admin offices now for, for, for medicine, HUP, came this one lady to me and said, that, oh, you in the military? I said, yes. I said, okay, there is Miss Sedisa Antonio's office, the lady who works with military students. And then I went to, to her office and then I told her my story and everything. Then she was like, oh, okay, let me just verify your papers and everything. Then she was happy. She said, she will just wait for the papers that come from the defense force. But now you must understand, uh, I stay with my wife and my two kids. Um, I'm a married man. So it had to take a lot of sacrifice. It meant sacrificing the extra money that I was getting from my overtime at work, sacrificing family time, sacrificing the lifestyle that I already made them get used to, you understand? So for those who are willing to also to get into medicine, the big question is, what is it that you are willing to sacrifice? I mean, I, I would have, I could have had pride to say, look, I already have two degrees. I've got an honors degree in my name and I'm, 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 I'm good at what I'm doing. I'm getting good money. But do you have that hunger for, or do you have that desire or do you have that thing to you to say that, look, this is a calling for me. This is how much influence I, I, I have for this thing. So you, you need to be willing to sacrifice, you know, you need to be willing to, to lose most of the things, you know, these days people love to have fun, love to be seen by other people and all that. The thing is, what is it that you want to make with your name? Do you want to uh, make a dent in the universe? Do you want to leave a mark or do you just want to be me? I thank you.